privilege to host one of the professors from Irma today. The pandemic that we've all lived through has changed the rural urban divide in a very huge way. In the last two years, a lot of things have shifted, including the rural urban consumption patterns, the contribution of rural India to the GDP uh, through agriculture, of course, the farm laws, the changes that that has led to. And therefore, this entire plethora of the things we've seen has resulted in a demand. And that's for people who can manage the rural side of our huge country. So to help you understand how you can build a career in this growing field and area and be part of this opportunity, we have one of the professors from Irma today. Uh, Professor Preeti Priya, it's a privilege to have you with me today, ma'am. Why don't you say hello to our audience and yeah. tell us a little bit about yourself. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Ocean, for inviting me on this platform. It's a privilege. It's a privilege. Uh, and it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. It's same here. All right, then. So, Preeti ma'am, without further ado, we'll uh, ask you to tell us what is it that you've been up to? What do you teach at Irma? And yeah. what has your life been like so far? Okay. So, for me, it's like Irma has become uh, a way of life. It's almost, I would say, close to 24 years of uh, association with Irma. I, I entered the campus as a very young 22 year old in 1998 uh, for prepare you know, actually appearing for the interview. So you know that I'm I'm also an Irman, batch 19. And then uh, after graduating from here, I worked with Nielsen Company in their market research, and I was looking after a lot of rural market research and rural consumer panel, etc. There and then. Uh, this idea of PhD kicked me in and I got into doing my PhD and joined Irma as a faculty. And uh, as one can easily predict that being coming from Nielsen doing market research, I started my first course that I taught was market research. And over the years, during the last 15, 16 years as a faculty at Irma, I have been teaching courses on marketing analytics, brand management, uh, marketing modeling for our doctoral students. So uh, related to this only. And, and in terms of my research, yes, my research is uh, being an Irman, working in Irma as a professor. Uh, my, my, my research work is mainly about pro-poor rural marketplaces, subsistence consumers, and understanding pro-poor business models, inclusive business models. And off late, I have also become very much interested in the idea of uh, gender diversity and inclusion. So that's I'm looking at. But this year, I'm also like uh, here, I, I look after a lot of institutional activities. Like currently, I'm also looking at, along with my other colleagues, uh, admissions at Irma. So I think given the kind of uh, audience you have brought in, I, I may be of some help to them in choosing their career options. Absolutely. Wow. That's a stellar experience. You basically had the entire journey of applying to Irma, getting in, studying, graduating, building a life, teaching, and finally yeah. helping others make it. Wow. That's, I mean, that's just amazing. Thank you so much for joining us again. And um, before we go into the details of the things you've done, why don't you give our audience a broad picture of what rural management and Irma is all about? So to put it formally, the first question for you is... Okay. That... <laughs> See, that... rural management in Irma. Yeah. That's what you want to understand. I would say that it's an act of passion for everyone. Uh, from the founder, Dr. Kurin, he created Irma as an alternative to IIMS. Right? And it's like, it's, it's a place where you will find that everyone is actually working on anything that she or he is working is working with passion and passion for what passion for contributing to the underserved segment of country so it, it see for that matter the rural is a metaphor it's there in our name but it's the metaphor R rural actually is standing for the underserved segment and in india it's not only related to the geographical rural but it is also about like within urban, the lower town classes and within the metros also, we see that rural and metaphorical form in, in variety of ways. Right, right. 
so that's that's it's like we are we do evaluate each and every action of ourselves with our founder dr kurian's ideology mm. that the how we can blend the power of management with power of people right. and take the country take the nation forward that's that sounds very inspiring especially if you when you bring up dr kurian then of course we all get inspired the fantastic yeah. story of amol yes, yes. And, um, i'm sure that you incorporate that you know whatever methodology that you feel is best to create more uh, leaders like that who'll make bring revolutions yeah, the way amol absolutely did. so dr kurian idea was when he like he has been a great institution builder so when he created amol ndtb and and many sister or institutions he wanted a place which would create more koreans and with that idea he he created irma so as you would know that uh, now each one of us uh, would be actually would be a very uh, regular consumer of the brand amul the brand amul is creation of dr korean but has been nurtured and sustained by now variety of generations different cohorts of airmen's currently the head of the amul is mr saudi is also also an airman and you can see that it's it's a it's a brand that is created nurtured and sustained and grown by by airmen's apart wow. from many others many others that we we would be contributing to but it is yes it's uh, now very close to our heart how oh, that is that is just the proof of what you guys are doing out there so that that's uh, stellar thank you so much for that in fact just before our conversation i had uh, the butter so, oh yes, yes. <laughs> all right okay so now i'll uh, uh, put up the second question to uh, professor which is that uh, you see mostly when we think of mbas in today's time the first thing that comes to our mind is an iim yes. i really want to understand from you what is the different perspective or different learning that as a as an aspirant i get at irma that i don't get anywhere else what yeah. what is it that i get here as an aspirant okay see uh, i would say that what is like i would try to kind of give you what we call the irma way ha uh, so this 22 months long journey at irma any any student undergoes how it is different from i am uh one is like yeah there are like, there are similarities there are similarities in in the sense that how iams would be building the foundation of management mm-hmm. knowledge and management skills in their students we are indeed doing that but what we do in this 22 months long journey which comprises of six classroom terms but there are two very strong experiential segment field segments embedded in this 22 months long journey so the first one is which is known as village field work so if you look at the field work uh, that is i would say is completely built around the uh, model of design thinking okay. so in in that sense it's like uh, now where we are actually introducing our students to the opportunities and challenges which are there in the rural so it's it's a kind of an immersive exercise for them mm-hmm. and uh, you would be very uh, happy to know that a lot of our entrepreneurs which have uh, now come from the irma uh, are actually a lo- such ideas mm-hmm. got generated during their field work segment a very interesting example which is coming to my mind is like from our batch of 33 uh, a group of two uh, uh, friends who were doing this field work to uh, prms in in madhya pradesh village they came up with this idea of how to kind of connect the asha workers with technology and now they their startup the dhwani rural information system which is delhi based Is is doing wonders in this space, right? And similarly, like there is another startup which is in the agricultural residue management space, ah, uh, called G Energy, and now they are like now they are growing and they have now combined the entire like how to kind of see the sugar cane sugar cane crop or cotton crop creates a lot of bio wastage. Right. 
so how to deal with for farmers it, this itself is a big problem but what we have done that how to monetize this waste by processing it that is what g energy does uh, so they create briquettes from these waste which is then used in boilers in in, in manufacturing sector so uh, like the experiential segments are really really great uh, mm -hmm. but if you look at in terms of and then we have this internship which is very standard uh, component of a uh, any any b school but there again i would say that our our uh, students are doing a lot of uh, uh, interesting uh, assignments when they get like uh, now assignments which which takes them to the field which takes them to test the knowledge that they have gained on on uh, now variety of management functional areas in the classroom mm -hmm. and their work itself is i would say that it's doing so well that they are actually being uh, always you will find that uh, now the a lot of summer internship is then getting converted to 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 a career option so it's it's a great way where our uh, students uh, i'm i'm using the word student here while conversing with you because you may find the word that we use very esoteric we use the word participant we do not call our students students we address them as participants wow so they are co learners in the journey of rural management that we faculty are also undertaking it's still evolving so this is amazing so that is where i would say the kind of approach that a faculty student relationship that we take is very different from what you will find in the other b schools that is one second you will find that while the b schools in its typical sense would focus on the idea of i would be teaching us to maximize the value of shareholders here the focus is on v so we are a strong believer in the idea that i exist because v exist otherwise we cannot so in that sense the all the courses that we are teaching are uh, so here when we are teaching economics microeconomics we are teaching how microeconomics for uh, theories would work in in an organizations in an organization which is owned by millions of farmers wow uh, it's not owned by one individual or a, a, a just a small group of individuals right so that is the this the difference between this i and v the idea of like we are now for our our students are not students but they are participants we along with them we are also evolving as as an institute so that is where i would say that in in terms of curriculum yes we do have foundational management courses the functional area courses so we train our people with all the management functional area courses and we do not shy away so when we talk about rural it doesn't mean that it is very desi desi ha huh? so we are not actually talking about rural means that everything still going on pen and paper here we are running elective courses on machine learning mm -hmm. we are introducing them to the idea of ai and blockchain right because these are the technology of tomorrow which is going to deal with the a uh, problem that nation has faced and and this is going to kind of uh, a great uh, tool to kind of uh, now create uh, parity between bridge the gap between rural and urban mm. so that way it is very similar but it's the approach which is or or the ethos with which we are focusing on is very different so for us throughout the courses experiential learning our informal conversation we focus on how one should consciously uh, try to develop empathy which is very important to become a leader now wow. how we can understand from uh, now others from their point of view professor i'll be honest i've been a student of economics i've studied everything in economics from econometrics to macro micro but never have i ever considered 
how microeconomics could help me run an organization with thousands of people like myself so i am genuinely uh, amazed by the things you do and yeah. kudos to all the work you're doing there uh, there's also the other bit which you said that um, you focus on empathy and it's more about collaborating rather than maximizing self interest and only yesterday was i reading a study that talked about how empathy is one of the key factors that determines whether an organization succeeds or not no. and the thing about culture empathy is at the heart of it so um yes. genuine appreciation uh, for the work you do and with that Thank um, you. <laughs> i mean absolutely you deserve it with that i'll go to the um, so i'll go to the second part of our conversation doctor which is some live uh, sorry professor some live questions that we get uh, so okay. two way one is for our viewers if you're someone who's watching this conversation right now and you have a question please send it up in the chat we'll take it up then there are some folks who have already who had sent in their questions to us okay. so now is the time when i want to ask some of their questions to you and get them answered right so the first uh, the first question that we've got is about the challenges that are associated with an mba in rural management there's someone who's curious uh, how they can build a career in fmcg or retail business mm-hmm. businesses through their mba in rural management okay okay see uh when someone asks it what are the challenges in rural management or in in making a career i would say there are no challenges rather there are only opportunities right you just look at the statistics what is being talked about for rural so if you look at rural one can see because oshin you are an economic student you can understand that any any economics analysis the fundamental would do in terms of analyzing it from supply side and analyzing it from demand side so let's look at rural on the demand side so rural as a driver of consumption so you would be surprised to know that uh, in the past decade rural in fmcg has grown at a an average annual growth rate of 11 12% which in comparison to urban it has been less than 4% and the entire growth that we see or for now we observe in the marketplace in fmcg with the number of products number of sku's 75% of this growth has been contributed by rural i am not saying data is saying that then if you look at it's like what we are estimating that by 25 rural fmcg market is going to be more than 16 lakh crore business then let's look at we are talking about fmcg and we know that almost 50% of rural income is spent on fmcg at present in consumer durables around 20% of sales of consumer durables is coming from rural so when we and i'm just looking at these two because these two are part of our daily lives right we are uh, daily we are using all these so given this there are i i don't see challenges rather we are i i i we see that there are whole lot of opportunities whether you talk about supply chain we are talking about business models which are going to kind of uh now so all this omni channel retailing last mile distribution everything that we are reading in the uh, business reports and media reports are all because they are talking about food. right so in the like, there are whole lot of opportunities uh, as far as rural fmcg is concerned now let's look at the rural from the supply side right so there there is a tremendous tremendous uh, growth which we are observing in the agri business sector yeah. right so there is a huge push not only only by corporates mm-hmm. but there is a huge push from government we are talking about 10000 farmer producers organization we are talking about see there is a new ministry of cooperation now so it has become more important and more relevant today then what we are talking about that the entire business model is looking at variety of models are looking at how we can connect farm to folk mm-hmm. linking the rural with the urban markets not only national but international there is a focus on agri exports focus on agri processing so given this there are there are huge opportunities in agri business mm. along with that is like the and amongst this i would say there is 
supply chain and logistic is playing a big big role ha uh, so that is one on the supply side and third i would talk about like how finance sector is changing in terms of their presence in rural ha hmm. uh, we now 90% of our rural people have an account holder hmm. or, or they have an account hmm. now hmm. it's about like how the person who has got into mm. uh, the financial ecosystem mm. how one can provide the best work service which is suited mm. to them mm. uh, him or her for as far as the banking finance uh, mm. is concerned so mm. actually if you look at if you see the data you'll find the loan portfolios of india mm. in rural rural is growing at 40% year on year wow. so there are umpteen opportunities as far as banking and finance is concerned and given the advent of technology the digital part you see every day we are talking about some fintech recently we are talking about like who are going to be sunicons the fintech companies of india which would become unicorn and you'll find not only that they are these unicorns are focusing on rural but also there you will find there are some of these sunicorns which include startups fintech companies started by urbans oh so that is where it's like so what about i'm talking about agri business fmcg durables banking financial services financial technology insurance where rural is not there there are no challenges there are only opportunities wow that's and super interesting we have an edge because we have been looking at rural for last 42 years mm-hmm. seriously absolutely yeah wow I very well i'm uh, able to answer your question and the question by uh, the audience definitely definitely in fact um, you've answered uh, many more than the, the one that you know you took up so thank you so much that was very comprehensive and before i go to the next uh, question for our conversation i'll take another one which is a very common question that our audience has asked and sent in and they're curious about the kind of role uh, the 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 kind of work that mm-hmm. they get to do after they pass out to mirma maybe you can mm-hmm. talk about the alums and what they really do yeah. or the kind of jobs they get all of that so to start with like if you see as i talked about the fmcg and durables on the consumption side and agri business and banking on the supply side of rural uh, yes. which is helping so if you look at fmcg and durables you'll find there are two kinds of role uh, that a fresher urban start it's the product manager or a brand manager role mm-hmm. or the sales manager role so now uh, you must have come across a uh, news on our our alam shifali who was featured as third na amongst the forbes 30 under 30 she happens to be brand manager of the brand amul cool okay right and uh, so it's like we are talking about that uh, the brand management role the product management role is one stream and then the sales management uh, where it's like that they are talking about and that is where i would say that how uh, our uh, participants get better trained to kind uh, in the sales distribution it's perhaps irma would be one of the unique uh, institutions where a course on sales and distribution management has been handled by industry stalwarts mm-hmm. amul takes this course and not faculty sit there as participant in that course right so and it's not a new thing it has been happening since i was student even my seniors talk about it oh. so the way it's like i would say that the way amul has grown from la to to 50000 crore plus turnover so irmans understanding on sales and distribution would also have grown this way so that is one then let's look at in terms of agri business so in agri business a lot of jobs that we receive is on strategic sourcing right so who is helping our students our participants to train themselves on strategic sourcing 
he is b shridhar who has handled the global sourcing for companies like mondelez oh uh, so you see these are very industry driven courses because they have direct implications on the first year of my graduate right yeah so that is where we are talking about that in agri business the sourcing rules ha uh, that how that that is then in terms of let's look at the banking and recently we have concluded our placements for this year mm-hmm. and what i have understood from my placement chair my colleague that the kind of roles that have been offered in in the financial sector mm-hmm. is on product design mm-hmm. because rural underserved market needs new set of products yeah. not the standard products which are being sold to people like me and you Hmm. so that is so product design then you know that the rural under rural actually is also characterized by lot of uncertainties hmm. the natural uncertainties right so given these uncertainties it means there is a bigger role for risk management there right and that is where the risk management roles are being offered by bfsi segment hmm. and then the standard roles of relationship managers that you are t- getting right so in and similarly so this is the agri business so you you see that typically they are graduates when they join they are being given a larger territory if they are into sales position if they are looking at the brand management product management sometimes they are actually handling more than one brand or multiple brands and then there is a, also a big group of our uh, recruiters who are into mm-hmm. consulting oh okay right but then mm-hmm. in the consulting it's more of the like now the when tcs is taking our people they are mm-hmm. taking it for their government and development vertical right right similarly when deloitte is coming and doing that it's taking for that so that that particular vertical so they are actually in the consulting again so we have like we would be running courses here to groom our people for such uh, roles right so there is a monitoring and evaluation is the big thing in economics now so we we do train on the impact assessment evaluation of projects so that that's how and this is the role that's how the our training and the roles that they get kind of now match with each other wow thank you so much again for that answer uh, ma'am and in fact if you have uh, the largest corporations out there coming and hiring from irma that just goes on to say a lot about the kind of work you're doing on your students preparing them to go out there and do so well for one of some of the largest corporations out there with that uh, we'll go to the next question meanwhile yeah. to our audience if you have more questions feel free to send them we'll take them up occasionally uh, by the time the next question i want to ask you uh, ma'am would be this if you can talk about any specific so we've understood what irma does how you train folks and mm-hmm. also how good you are at it now we want to understand what is it that you look for to in in uh, participants uh, to be accurate what are the traits attributes experiences that you look for in potential candidate okay uh good question uh see the first and foremost important thing is that we want an individual with intellectual curiosity ha uh, so the someone who has inquisitiveness which is complemented with good learning and analytical abilities and that is uh, now it's i think it is a very standard thing it would also be so it's similar to what any other b school would be looking at but in terms of when i say this intellectual curiosity curiosity around what is happening around us not only the big picture but also the picture at the local level what is happening around my community what is happening around my environment right so in a in a way so that is one second i would say that i we do look for people with who are showing a good and good level of interpersonal relationship skills right in the sense that we would try to kind of understand that if they are what is the what would be their level of emotional intelligence 
the idea here is to check that if they have balanced responses to the emotive situations yeah. uh, and not really a very impulsive kind of a person then we are looking at that they see at irma we are interested in people who are courageous but not audacious right who are assertive but not arrogant so that is where if you look at we would be and where you will find this courage and where you will find this assert assertiveness in people who show cooperative nature and not really so it's it's not a, as i have been talking about we believe in we and not necessarily in i and so this is one and definitely irma is a place for proactive people and not for inactive people so not really that okay aur kuch kar nahi pa rahe to hame na mba karna hai job leni hai mba is a ticket to job no Hmm? so it's like who are very willing to take action is 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 the person that and i would say that it's like what happens in our case like in in our program if you see our program is built around three systems the economic system so we want to understand the marketplace what is happening in the marketplace Mm-hmm. but markets do not exist in an isolation they they are embedded in the social system right so we must understand what is happening in the social system and mm-hmm. how social system is interacting with this marketplace or economic system and mm-hmm. then the third one that we are talking about again these two do not exist as dyad they are existing within this biosphere mm mm-hmm. so we we are in a way if you see we would be looking for people with an intellectual curiosity around these three and not only about stock market <laughs> got it <laughs> so so how it's like it's it's a we we do take a holistic approach so we are actually basically looking for that if people have are showing some sparks on these lines Mm-hmm. and the entire two year process that we uh, no we mm-hmm. take this journey together with the participant mm-hmm. we keep on working towards honing these traits mm-hmm. so right. yes we would be in in our classrooms through the pedagogy that we would follow a lot of mm-hmm. arrogant mm-hmm. so called audacious people would turn as now the courage would turn into courageous and would turn into assertive people and when they go for this field work ah mm-hmm. uh, then again field work actually further trains them on these traits because we as you were talking about now that empathy has now come out as one of the very important influencing factor for the success of organization and we have been believing in this value of empathy since 79 hmm. so that's how it's like all these are very important for us right wow so thank amul, you so as you can see that amul competes but it cooperates okay. and whom it it's cooperating with with the farmers with the collaborators who are their supply chain partners who are their marketing partners so that's how it's like the idea is built around the right combination of cooperation and competition right plus you know about the empathy bit uh, i think amul is one of the very few brands that sort of equally well connect with urban consumers rural consumers high class elites yeah Yes, absolutely. Okay, everybody yes. loves it, and I think that that just goes on to show how being empathetic and being cooperative, which are things you teach, helps uh, out there in the real world yeah. so much. Sorry to cut you, Ocean. We do not teach. Right. We do not teach. We learn. We learn together. Absolutely. Awesome. Um, I have just a couple of follow-up questions to that. Um, as an aspirant, now I understand what is it that you're looking for. i'm also curious about what is it um, that could be a sort of a uh, that could hurt me or you know prevent me from getting into irma the direct question is if i'm someone with not very high ac- uh, academic if my scores are average uh, throughout 
is that a problem what is the policy around that or how do you look at scores okay. in the admission process see our first round shortlist happens only on the cat or zat score at right. that stage we are not really looking at whether what is your academic pedigree what has been your academic performance no we don't look at that okay. we see that the as far as the aptitude is concerned hmm. whatever you have done and in your graduation etc and now all of you have written cat and that is or arzat and that's the best assessor of your aptitude right. and on the basis of that we shortlist okay. right and once after the shortlisting we are inviting them for a detail what we say the personal interaction so our interviews are also like they are trying to collect more and more data of the candidate so that we can see can will we be the right partners in the journey right. so more than selection now the elimination it, it's uh, now it's it's more of a match making that we are doing that whether we will match together that is so the personal interview as or interaction will have a 35% weightage in the overall selection process and when we are preparing the final merit list and before during the interview only we are going for uh, a short written ability test okay that is something which is where we are trying to assess two things mm mm-hmm. uh one is their written communication skill right the clarity of thought and how they are articulating hmm. right so it's like it, it, every day we will be coming up with some new idea it could be very contemporary what is at that point of time in the month of february happening so we are typically trying to understand what we are looking for now the traits that we are talking about and then in the uh, now when we are actually going for a now preparing the list of finally selected 240 uh, future irmans that we are interested in there uh, we are believer in diversity and inclusion so there is a gender diversity score we are a believer on really region diversity regional diversity because irma is 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 a national level uh, management institutions we are getting people from andaman also from manipur also and from now so from across now there would be a very good representation of all the uh, states and in that you will find that this year what we are introducing many of your audience might not be even aware of what we know as now aspirational districts of india of government of india okay. these are 126 120 plus districts which government of india through niti aayog has identified and they are doing lot of activities there to improve all the development metrics there so okay. what we are saying that if you are you have done your 10th or 12th from an aspirational district Mm-hmm. means that you have actually your foundation has been built there and from mm-hmm. there you have come up to a play uh, now a state where you are courage you are taking courage to write cat right. or zat mm-hmm. and so there is going to be a bonus point for people who are showing that kind of a record okay. then we do value uh, work experience in the final selection but mm-hmm. again i would say that there is a like it moves from 0 to 3 years it peaks there and mm-hmm. then it goes down right so work experience with 3 years are the most preferred one but mm-hmm. i would say that we do have a lot of uh, uh, preference for our freshers so in irma within the profile you will find that uh, now uh, close to 50% of our batch would be freshers and and that is uh, just i would say that the, this is an uh, re- a reflection of what is happening in india in management education space right. uh, so freshers it's it's largely everywhere and that is what we are so these are the things that we are following in terms of there is some bonus point for sports also but all these happen at the final selection stage and not at the shortlisting so rather at that stage we are more open uh and generous in inviting people and participate in our uh, process all right great thank you so much um the other question that i had in mind was a little bit about um the money that 
uh, there i'll be spending on my education if i get okay. into irma as an aspirant and if i can get any scholarship or oh. waiver okay that's i would say that uh, now, now as you understand ocean that we are talking about an institute which has a very different kind of a genesis a very different kind of founder mm -hmm. uh, so our fees you will find that our tuition fee is only 11.74 lakhs mm -hmm. for indian nationals and over and above we are talking about 80 plus scholarships mm -hmm. wow. which is cumulatively it comes to uh, more than 3.15 crores Oh. to be very precise this year it has been 3.189 crores wow so what we are talking about here like the kind of scholarships so there are three kind of scholarships mm -hmm. merit based scholarships right. means based scholarship and then women centric scholarship so we have actually 10 scholarship for first year and 10 mm -hmm. scholarship for second year are uh, exclusively for our girl participants what right and that is 50% tuition fee waiver oh, okay. then we have around 12 tuition fee waiver for the first year full mm -hmm. so full 11 lakh 11.74 lakh is free for these 12 students oh. and so these are like these are all instituted by from our own fund Okay. then we have also generated fund from different sources like mirai asset foundation mm -hmm. idfc first bank mm -hmm. ongc foundation or or we we, we got uh, lonsen and kiri foundation so from the csr foundations who are interested in 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 institutions like or in the higher education space so that is uh, so there is there is a like there are and then we do facilitate we mm -hmm. take the lead in facilitating the state scholarship for uh, scheduled caste participants scheduled yeah. tribe participants and all that anyway uh, we do that mm -hmm. so in a way ocean if you see like what has happened in india that this higher education space is typically very elitist right yeah. right and yeah. many of us uh, would have missed the bus purely because we had financial constraints and that dharma is uh, now very consciously aware and we always do uh, mm -hmm. now take action and we are very proactive in ensuring that nobody should lose the chance of getting higher education at dharma mm -hmm. doing their mba at dharma just because they could not manage the money rather we also have a kind of now we we talk about a bridge fund in mm -hmm. the sense like if there is a now issue coming in the loan processing do mm -hmm. we have very strong tie ups with public sector banks and but for that time being irma is giving you a bridge fund which is 0% interest wow also uh, helping you not to lose irma seat irma admissions just because loan is getting delayed that's uh, really inspiring i mean uh, the values that you talked Uh, about earlier with your examples it seems like you embody them 100% as an institution and there's no room for you know skepticity around any of that yeah. 100% you have principles and as an institution you're following them through and through all right uh, yeah. time for the next question ma'am for you and uh, right now we've talked a lot of about um, you know the education the placements the fees the selection the 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 question that i want to take you into now is you see as irma is different and unique in a lot of ways what are some of the myths that you've seen people have about it mind why don't you debunk them okay. for us <laughs> yes uh, as we like now uh, we interact a lot with our participants huh? it's 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 a very close relationship or close bonding that we have so i would say yes it's like now rural hame uh, na why only uh, the candidates even their parents will have a lot of apprehensions mere bacche ko kya rural mein hi rehna hoga or or is is it like after doing irma will i be working in rural areas so this is the biggest myth that we have ha huh? and i would say that it it happens because we have rural in our name right but i would say like uh, uh, when uh, i have the my name preeti or you have the name ocean how many times people would associate you with osho or how many times 
people would associate preeti with love no it just doesn't happen that way and as i was talking about rural is a metaphor we would be working for the growth and development of rural mm-hmm. but not necessarily it means that i am in throughout rural. my life going to spend my time in a village no that's not the second myth is like now the rural is pen paper very mm-hmm. traditional mm-hmm. no technology mm-hmm. but today's data is itself showing like if you see there is like the number of internet users who are using internet for financial mm-hmm. transactions are exactly similar in urban and rural oh. statistics are saying so right. uh, so it's not only that i or you are using this uh all this uh now the mobile based uh payment system everyone is using you see how a lot of rural entrepreneurship have come up mm-hmm. uh, there is a huge uh change there uh mm-hmm. in 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 the rural and that is where there there is a lot of acceptance for of technology within the rural marketplace and a lot of organizations a new set of a new generation organization system is getting set up which mm-hmm. is based on technology mm-hmm. the high end technology so our our elements are also working in google mm-hmm. uh, so my uh, uh, kuntal or or na who who happens to be from the 31st batch she mm-hmm. from amul to mm-hmm. airtel to paytm to google or you will find people starting from verka ha huh, which right. is your verka brand that you must have seen in punjab chandigarh and delhi to unilever so it's it's like it's not and i would also say that at not only that we are talking about in terms of corporate hmm. but if you see a lot of innovative work which has happened hmm. in changing the rural landscape rural hmm. uh, uh, um, system in india irmans mm-hmm. have contributed a lot mm. uh, there is a immense contribution the solar energy transformation which is happening you'll find lot of irmans working there selco which is like one of the now co-founders were or or the initial uh, people who started this were irmans mm-hmm. or uh, you would have like come across uh, if uh, audience or, or you you watched uh, kbc during covid time last year Mm-hmm. Uh, KBC, KBC was also Amitabh Bachchan was running Karmveer series, right? Right, and in one of those Karmveer series, mm-hmm. our Irman, a very mm-hmm. respectful Irman, uh, uh, as as I uh, personally have a lot of respect for him, Rajiv Kandel Balji, who had appeared there. He is founder of an organization in Udaipur called Ajivika Bureau. which provides legal services to migrant workers and oh. his the reason for his appearance in uh, in that oh. karmveer episode with amitabh bachchan was the kind of work mm-hmm. he had done to mm-hmm. handle the migrant workers crisis during covid 2020 wow and so it's i i would say that it's not really only the it now uh, irma when we are talking about so the myths that rural mm. and you will also find that our our irmans have got into film making have got into like irmans you will find them in microsoft also developing products or or now helping people develop products which are more suitable for rural or mm. you will find people who are like uh, now people like ante mukherjee who is the opinion columnist from bloomberg right. or now filmmakers like praveen morshale or mamta murthy or there are n n number of social entrepreneurs who have come from urban so it's only rural being in village or getting stuck to rural i would not be able to change my career are are the biggest myths which not only see i would say that the youngsters are more clear but perhaps parents are not especially for freshers Yeah. Now, because they still now parents are influencing their decisions, and I would say that uh, it's not there. The reality is very different, very different. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. indeed a myth. 
and all this exposure that they get during their prm journey mm-hmm. rather they actually they come out as a more uh now more transformed and more emotionally stable more emotionally intelligent was more tolerant to ambiguity as an individual so it's not only in profession that our journey helps us mm-hmm. but also as an individual in our personal life space it's also it has an amazing contribution I'm saying it more as a Nirman that how what I have experienced. Absolutely, and um, that just brings me to the part of the conversation where you know we want to hear your stories as a student at ISMA. Anything that stood out for you when you were studying, anything that helped you learn a lot, or any just just a casual story that you think of when you look okay. back. Okay, actually, like there have been, uh, perhaps there have been many. Uh, right. but uh, again as i would say that the field work segment especially for me mm-hmm. uh, has been a very uh, now a uh, life changing experience mm-hmm. for me i was uh, now i i had been to a tribal village in udaipur okay. and i was doing this field work under the mentorship of uh, nilima khetan and priyanka singh of seva mandir who are now like nilima is heading uh vedanta csr now so uh, it's a tribal village and uh, for the first time i'm out in a village and uh, i come across as a, a very interesting so udaipur now being like they were uh, now there is a always because of the bad monsoon now there would be bouts of drought right uh, in in this uh, and i first i came across the idea of what we call the village level green bank so every year after the harvest mm. now people are taking out whatever they can mm-hmm. and creating a grain pool which would take care of villagers in the uh, now during the crisis time the entire oh. community so see this is again i would say that this is this has been it had a lot of effect Right. lot of effect impact on me as an individual mm-hmm. and i personally see that though i was working with a multinational who had, which had a presence in more than 100 countries nilson but mm-hmm. i still at heart i was an ermund there right. and when the earthquake 2001 hit us uh, in in gujarat mm-hmm. right many of like now uh, we we were doing like and and i was perhaps the one which who was at the front to kind of uh, handle the uh, you know volunteering and going to the uh, now going to the bhuj where it was happening that is one and so this is more on the experiential side and i, I had done my internship with uh, in kutch uh, with salt workers oh uh, who actually uh, now produce salt who go into the kutch and they are the inland salt producers Wow. so we were actually assessing that can they be collectivized and can can an amul model work there uh, so that it has been like now okay, okay where, wherever you work it is second i would say the how classroom actually you know prepared us mm-hmm. so i it's it's my term one yeah and i am going through a course on uh, rural sociology and polity where they introduce us to what the rural so- social system is about yeah. and my finance professor comes in and we okay. we find that why why is he entering this classroom and okay. he is entering the classroom with a brown envelope and a quiz is distributed so in a rural sociology class where you were talk now you were listening about our na social system all of a sudden there is a finance quiz that you have to write it's a surprise quiz and perhaps finance class was not even scheduled in that week leave a part in the class and then we realized oh my god this is the way that irma is trying to make me more tolerant to shocks oh to wow. to the variety of so that was like okay that's and and this this became then we kind of we were always uh, now they were keeping us on our toes like uh, maybe in a rural so- social uh, now social system class i can get a quiz on uh, quantitative techniques so that is uh, now there have been and then i would say that uh, now the irma mess 
Mm-hmm. Uh, now the which uh, the participants only collectively r- used to run at uh, now uh, when we were uh, uh, studying here. Mm-hmm. So there would be like now what chai pe charcha today we are having a charcha but there is no chai <laughs> and uh, so it's like now the uh, from after dinner or many always you will find a group of a bunch of us sitting right. in the mess lawn. Okay. and uh, now having a lot of charcha on everything or anything uh, yeah. under this uh, na wow. sky yeah. and yeah. Uh, we would be going on and more so it's like uh, here we are very possessive about our irma lawns okay ah uh, so okay. we can't cross the lawns okay okay so okay. it is like if i am crossing the lawn and someone has noticed me there is nothing to be done only mm-hmm. he or she who has observed me crossing the lawn has to mm-hmm. go and write it on the mess bulletin board that priti cross the lawn <laughs> at this time and what is going to happen if this would get added to my mess bill <laughs> so like we were also being you you see the system now which is trying to even through outside the classroom is trying to teach us how to take care of our environment absolutely there have been many fun moments there have been many uh, na serious moments also like na uh, doing uh, preparing for the next day's assignment project presentations wow. or it's like we used to have a simulation and we still run but we run now in digital form mm-hmm. uh, what we have it's an in in house we have developed this simulation game okay. to understand how rural small holder farmers mm-hmm. small holders mm-hmm. make decisions and that is okay. known as narampur express game okay so you are like now you are being assigned in a group where you are like assigned a family uh-huh. so how your decisions are going to so the idea is that you have to ensure that you are feeding your family and also feeding your livestock and then you are not able to produce there is a god who is kind of announcing that there is no rain so there is a drought and how you are going to do it so all that in, in this like how to kind of now you were actually saying why why do i have so much of a bigger family or or we we actually it's it's like putting us into the shoes of uh, those farmers mm-hmm. and that we will do it before our term one starts Mm-hmm. and then my economics professor starts asking me questions in the uh, na in the class on uh, na naranpur so how did na you discover the price in naranpur game for the straw or for milk and how market interventions or state interventions change the uh, na the shape and size of the village so mm. that's again like there have been many and it has been a wonderful journey two years and perhaps that is the love that kind of now keep attracting us towards irma and uh, not only me that now you you speak to any irman and you will find that uh, big uh, sometimes perhaps a, a, a na an attachment which goes to the extent of being possessive about irma or being <laughs> obsessed about irma <laughs> Oh, wow uh, that that was sound that sounds amazing um because for two reasons one is you talked about practical experiences where you actually saw what happens on ground level two you had experiences from class where you were actually being trained to be good executives and three you had experiences having a lot of fun all so it's yes. very very cool. <laughs> all right ma'am we have uh, one two minutes to go uh, before we wind up the webinar and before that i'll take one quick question from our live audience which sure. is on the uh, irma sat uh, there's someone who's asking if it's compulsory for everyone or no no there is no irma sat there is no okay. irma sat okay we okay. are going to take the cat sat score we would be shortlisting and directly we would be calling for the interview or personal interaction and that point of time we will have a short written ability test ha huh? which also given this covid pandemic we are planning to run it online only okay. the written ability test so before the interview only we would be kind of they they can write it at their own uh, now with their peace of mind at their own place so the idea is not to 
uh, check that what they are doing. And we would be now having interaction on that written uh, uh, document that no Irma sent. Okay, okay, all right. Okay, then thank you so much for that answer. Uh, now that it's almost time to wind up, why don't you take a minute or two to maybe share a message with everybody who's, uh, you know, wanting to apply uh, at IRMA or to those who want to make a career at large in rural management? Uh, <laughs> good. I would just say that if you are actually looking for a career, a meaningful career, and mm -hmm. not necessarily a career which is only giving you money, but a lot of, uh, now there is, there is a, uh, now, I, I would say that even when you are, we are talking about a corporate career, it, it itself has a lot of purpose. Yeah. But if you are curious about what is happening in India, mm -hmm. how you, you are very uh, passionate about contributing to the idea of taking India a 5 trillion economy, Mm -hmm. And if you want to be a contributor there, I would say Irma is going to be a great choice for you because that 5 trillion economy that we are dreaming of is going to come largely from rural. Absolutely. Right. And I would say that at this moment of time, mm -hmm. uh, the kind of grooming, the kind of nurturing mm -hmm. and the kind of now, nurturing with care that you would get at Irma in a management education is something which I would very strongly say that none of the B schools would provide in India. I have, I honestly have no doubt about that. Personally speaking, after this conversation, 100% sure that you guys know what you're doing and are pretty good at it. With that, I want to thank you for your time today, ma'am. It was absolutely, it was a total pleasure speaking with you. You were very comprehensive, helpful, empathetic, no doubt about it. Oh. So, thanks, thanks so thank much. Thank you so again. much, Ocean. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right, then. It has been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, and as I would again reiterate that talking to you makes me feel as if I'm talking to one of my participant whom I have taught perhaps two, three years back. Uh, so you you are actually like, uh, it's, it doesn't sound that we are meeting for the first time. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I have been a great host. Thank, thank you so much again. And thank you to everyone who's been watching. Um, why don't you go check out, if you have more questions about Irma, you could check out the website. You'll find links in the chat. If you have yeah. more questions, write to us. We'll get them answered. We have uh, Preeti, ma'am. We have her contact. We'll get them answered. So um, all the best uh, to everyone who's applying for Irma or for looking at a career in rural management. And thank you so much once again for joining us. I'll see you next time. Thank you, Preeti, ma'am. Have a good evening. Thank you, Ocean. Bye. Bye-bye. And I'm wishing all the best for my audience. Absolutely. Uh, because they are going to make a very strong, uh, very big decision of their life. And I wish them that they make the right choice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.